the communities, they celebrate the Mawlid. What's the situation regarding the Mawlid, Barakallah Fikum? Jazakallah khair, uh, my dear brother, for your question. And before we get into the answer, inshallah ta'ala, uh, voice is enough, clear enough, inshallah. Little, a bit, okay. bit, bit louder, a bit louder, please. A bit louder. I'll try my best. Tayyip, is it, is it now okay, bi'ithnillah? Yeah, that's much better. Uh, some people say it's closer, not clear. Allah. No, it's not clear. Tayyip, wallahi, I'll try my best, bi'ithnillah. Tayyip, uh, if anyone else and now from the audience and from the viewers can tell me, yes, alhamdulillah. Tayyip, alhamdulillah. So we will start uh, by the awl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praises due to Allah We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness and we send salutation upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم peace be upon him and all those who follow his footsteps still the day of judgment now, regarding the question of Mawlid, and before we come to the Mawlid and uh, Halal, Haram, permissible, not permissible, uh, we'll just go through the basics. I'm not here to tell who is right and who is wrong. We'll stick to the basics. And once we know the basics, then you decide by yourself. And it's simple as that. I'm not a mufti. I'm not a alim. But just giving you basics so you will understand what are the basics. And based on the basics, you, you know, see yourself. Then I will tell you what happening in, in my in a country where I live, in Kuwait or some other countries. Uh, well, even if uh, it's happening or not happening in the country, is the country criteria for us to follow and do it or not to do it? Well, as I told you, once we go through the principle, inshallah ta'ala, everything will be easy for all of us. Thank you. First of all, Mawlid in Nabawi, the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's understand what is the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now everyone know in Arab region, there is no concept of writing things. In Arab region, before even Islam, there was no concept of writing. No, it's just a word. It comes from the mouth. Yeah, Sheikh Abu Shu'aib, I want to sell you my car. Abu Shu'aib will say, I agree, I accept. That's it. Done. After that, if I say, well, but actually, Abu Shu'aib, I think I, I made the uh, you know, quick decision. No, 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 no. This is, this is not from the Arabs. No, no, no. Once the word come out from the mouth, that's it. The deal done. Similarly, people, they have no custom they have no tradition of writing things. So now you will understand when a person is born or a dead at that time, more than 1,000, 2,000 years ago, there is no birth certificate, there is no death certificate. Okay? So there is nothing written. Okay, now we understand that. Like, now, as we know, that people used to call certain years and certain things based on the incident for example uh, when abraha came from yemen with the elephants to come and destroy the kaaba and it was a big event the arabs the mushrikeen the pagans there were no muslim at that time they are running away uh, frightened uh, scared from the huge army of abraha with the elephants to come and destroy the kaaba and they used to see the Kaaba as something sacred, as something big, as something holy, whatsoever. So now they cannot face Abraha. Everyone flee, everyone went out from their houses, those who went inside the caves, those who went up, up to the mountain, and just waiting for Abraha to come and destroy the Kaaba. Now, we know in Islamic uh, history and in Quran, uh, there is a, a surah al fil the chapter of elephant, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Mecca or protected Kaaba specifically by sending the small birds called Ababil, having and carrying the small stones in their both, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 hands or clothes and in their mouth and throwing it on these armies and the elephants. And alhamdulillah, 
by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all these armies uh, died and the elephant died. Now, it was known to the Arab that this year, the year when the Abraha came and was destroyed the Kaaba and then the Allah Almighty sent the birds and destroyed the Abraha and his army, it was called Am al fil the year of the elephant. Okay, again, nothing is written. Abu Talib didn't write anything, Abu Lahab didn't write anything, Quraysh, uh, uh, Bani Hashim, all these tribes didn't write anything, it's just a word of mouth. They take an incident, put it on certain year. So after five, ten years, oh, you remember Abel Fil? Do you remember the elephant year? Yeah, it was very difficult and we couldn't, you know, face the army. This is how they talk. Okay, now this is something for you to understand. Okay, also it was known that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born in Amil Fil. In Amil Fil. Now, no one knows about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he will be a prophet one day. He will have that uh, high status in the ummah with Allah and, you know, uh, all over the world and everything. No one knows. He is uh, born like any other child was born. Yeah, it's a different thing that when he was born, the... the uh, uh, people in in Persia, those who used to have the fire, the fire, you know, uh, 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 went off and everything. That's a different case. But no one know about Muhammad that you know what he will be. But all it's known that he was born in Amal Fil. Now, even I want all of you, please, go and check the history when he was born. Some of the ulama says he was born in Ramadan. Some of the ulama says he was born in Rabi' al-Awwal. Some of the ulama says he was born in uh, uh, Shaban. Some of the ulama says he was born in Rajab. So among the ulama, there is nothing common. Ulama, I'm talking about these scholars or those historians, those who used to write the history. Among themselves, there are differences of opinion. Yes, okay, the, the most uh, famous opinion that the people, the most people agreed upon is the uh, Rabi' al-Awwal, you know, is the uh, Rabi' al-Awwal that he was born in, but no one knows for sure. Now, later on, the Prophet ﷺ, he is growing up in his 20s, known in the community, in the society that he is a Sadiq al-Ameen, he is the trustworthy, he is the honest, he is, he is, his name got famous and he was some someone who was loved by the community, by the society, by the Quraysh and uh, by the, the different tribes. Okay, now when he was at the age of 40, he received the revelation. He became a prophet. Now his name is getting, you know, to different tribes. There is a man, his name is Muhammad, calling himself a prophet, calling about Tawheed, calling about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they went back. They said, okay, who's Muhammad? Oh, yes, yes, he is the son of Abdullah. Yeah, 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 he was born in Amil Fil. Yeah, this is all they know that he was born in Amil Fil. He was born in the year of elephant. That's it. Which date, which month, it was not significant at that time. So no one knows. It's just the ulama's, uh, you know, guess that this month or that. Okay. Now let's say, you know, we agree on this, you know, Rabi' al-Awwal, for example. Now, subhanAllah, the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known. Because he is a prophet, people know about him, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, the, the Arabs and the tribes, and everyone knows about him. So when he died, everyone knew that when he died, they memorized it. It was something verbally known to the people, uh, amongst the people, as well it was written. Because at that time, people started writing things. So when he was died, he was died on Rabi' al-Awwal. Rabi' al-Awwal. Exactly on the, you know, the day that people claim that he was born. So now we do not know, to be honest with you, we do not know when he was born exactly, but we know when he was, you know, when he died. He died exactly on, on Rabi'ul Awwal, Thani Asham Rabi'ul Awwal, the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. So this is another thing that, you know, if you think about it, well, you are celebrating when he was, you know, when he was dead or when he died. Actually, we are celebrating that day, not the actual day that no one knows about it. But again, this is not the dalil, this is not the evidence that I'm showing it to you. Now, the Prophet ﷺ told us that I am leaving behind you two things. Hold upon them, cling 
and you know just just hold them hard from your tooth you know from your teeth and the back teeth that you know you are clinging on it why because this is something that you don't want to leave what is that ya rasulullah the sahaba said he says kitabullah wa sunnati i'm leaving behind me the book of allah and my sunnah if you hold upon it tightly not only holding upon these two things but cling just just bite on these you know as two things as you know you don't want to leave it you don't want to leave it kitabullah and sunnah rasulullah book of allah and the uh, sunnah and the tradition of that or teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now this is the basic and bottom line i'm telling you this is the things that the prophet ﷺ told us to hold upon even in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran allah says allah wa rasul obey allah and obey rasulullah uh, in different places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you know i send the quran wa mithlahu ma'ahu i send this quran and similar you know to it i send it with, with you the tafsir of all the ulama that what is the similar of the Quran that Allah sent with it? It's the sunnah of the Prophet. You take these two things together. Okay, done? Done. Now let's go to the second step. Now, the celebration of the Prophet done by the Rasulullah, you answer to yourself. Go check your uh, any book of the tafsir or sirah, the uh, history or the biography of the Prophet. You will not find or let me not say find or not find you go and check by yourself but if you want my answer you will not find that he celebrated gathered the sahaba sitting and then chanting or talking about himself or whatsoever never happened okay maybe let's say the prophet was very humble and down to earth and he didn't like to do any things like that so he didn't do it even though and he, he received the revelation at the age of 40. He died at the age of 63, 23 years that he was a prophet. He didn't do it. Okay, let's say he was so humble that he didn't do it. Okay. What about those who used to love him the most? Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, the first Khalifa. He ruled for two years. So even before two years, we never ever came to know from his biography, from his history, from his seerah, that one day Abu Bakr was sitting with his family, uh, Aisha, his daughter, radiallahu anhum jami'an, and uh, you know, they celebrated the mawlid of the Prophet because they loved him a lot. Never happened. Maybe I don't know, maybe I have little knowledge. If you know anything like that, please let me know. Okay. Uh, when he was Khalifa, now he is a ruler, he's sitting on a, on a, on a chair that he's ruling the Muslim Ummah. He didn't do anything like that for two years, neither he asked the companion or anyone to do it. Okay. Who's after it? Umar ibn Khattab. How many years he ruled? Ten years. Ten years. In each year you have, uh, mashallah, how many weeks and uh, how many days? Not even once it says that the Umar ibn Khattab celebrated the Mawlid of the Rasul because he missed him a lot, he loved him a lot, he did anything that shows, you know, the, the love of the Rasulullah. So let's do the moment. Never happened. Then Uthman ibn Affan ruled. Then uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib ruled. Then the other, you know, Khilafah came uh, to the place. Whatever you call the Khilafah. All the way, all the way, 300 years. Brothers and sisters, listen this very carefully. 300 years. There is no mawlid whatsoever. So the Prophet he didn't do it. Sahaba, the best of the Sahaba. And the Prophet says, the best time is the my time and the time of the next generation and the next generation. So his time, Sahaba's time, Tabi'in time, Tabi'in time, tabi tabi time uh, the, the almost 300 years, even though the 300 years is not calculated in the three generation, but at least the three generation and up to 200 and 300 years, there is no celebration of Mawlid and Nabawi. So definitely, the first 300, definitely the people does not love the Prophet ﷺ. They don't care about the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And they don't care about you know, the Prophet ﷺ as we care. So they didn't do it and we are doing it. This is the, this is the final result that we can come, and come to. So again, I'm not saying you're doing right and wrong. Please just open your heart. Ask Allah Almighty to guide you properly. Go through the evidences, go what the Prophet ﷺ told us, go what Allah told us, see the life of the Sahaba, the best generation who love the Prophet ﷺ, definitely better than us.
they die for the Prophet because of us. The, one of the women came, look at the love of the Prophet. Prophet one of the women came to the Prophet. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I have nothing to give you. You are going to the war. I have nothing to offer. Please take my toddler. Listen, take my toddler and carry him. And if you see any born, any arrow coming to you, take my toddler and save yourself with my toddler. Let my toddler, let my infant baby get the the let the arrow goes to the baby boy first then coming to you this was the love of the prophet was there among the sahaba among the companion they are dying and willing to give their children to die for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the prophet now Coming to the time that we are living in here. Now we claim, my brothers and sisters, that if you don't do Mawla the Nabawi, you are against the Prophet. You do not love the Prophet. You are against the love of the Sunnah. My brothers and sisters, is it that only one day you show the love of the Prophet? Where is the uh, 365 days? Okay, one day is gone. And what about the rest of the days? If, if only one day you show the Prophet, you chant, Ya Rasulullah, Habibi, and, and all these things that you will say. Definitely, he is Habibuna. Definitely, he is Sayyiduna. He is our master. He is our beloved Prophet Muhammad. We, we love him the most and we follow his Sunnah the most. But this cannot be that, you know, the feelings come over you and everything. And Ya Rasulullah. And unfortunately, as the brother says, uh, I saw some of the clips in, in Pakistan that wallahi, it's looked like a disco then then uh, a celebration of the prophet i saw people dancing wallahi it's a video you can see it maybe on social media that people dancing women and men dancing you know lights going on wallahi it's looked like a disco so say this is what happened when you don't stick to the quran this is what will happen when you don't stick to the sunnah of the prophet so long story short my brothers and sisters i again i will not tell you who's right and who's wrong Please go check the history. Ask Allah Almighty to open up and lighten your heart, lighten your brain, my brain too, my heart too, before anyone else. So we will see the haq and we follow it. We will see the truth and follow it. And Allah knows best. Coming to the last uh, portion of the brother uh, Abu Shaid that he says about the Arab countries. So far, it is not, alhamdulillah, for example, in Kuwait, it is not uh, allowed to, to do anything openly, publicly. But yes, people do uh, in their home, in their basements, in uh, here and there. Yes, publicly it's not allowed. But again, I would say this is not the criteria. What if the country tomorrow uh, celebrates? Uh, yes, actually we, we have a, a off day on Mawlid and Nabawi. Uh, we have off day. The government gives the off day. But yes, we do not celebrate. But again, uh, what's the reason giving it off day and people start thinking it's so Allahu Akbar. Maybe the next generation, the next ruler will come, the next president will come, and he will say it's allowed. Well, this one does not mean that you know it is allowed. They are celebrating it. Okay, up to them. But we stick to the Quran, the Sunnah, the Sahaba, and the Salihin. The righteous uh, generation came after them, and Allah knows best. Mashallah, Sheikh. That was a very beautiful response, and uh, I wasn't really expecting that. Barakallah fiqum.